Hey everybody and a very warm welcome back to Sand Injunction and I know before you say anything it's been a long long time since I put any uh, videos out or content out on this channel. I do apologize from that, I really do. I haven't had a lot of time and that's the honest truth. I've been full on with my two art channels, that's uh, Paul's Watercolor Studio and my more recent one which is Paul's Mobile Studio. Both of those, along with my Patreon and my gallery, my physical gallery in Hive, and um, all my teaching activities, has just meant to say that I don't have too much time. Now, I sort of, half of me wishes I hadn't taken the old sanding down, and that really is me just clutching at straws, because I know at some point that I would have had to have done that to make a studio in a large enough space at home to do that. So it was done for the right reasons, but I still hanker after what I had. And I, I think because I haven't actually gone running into a new one, I'm sort of wishing in a way that I hadn't taken down the old one. But that's done and I can't really dwell like I am. I shouldn't do anyway. There's nothing I can really do about it. So in the what's been going on, well, this video that you're going to watch now should have been out a couple of months ago. And I've just said that time has prevented me doing a lot. And I have also been working uh, with Paul from Galgorm, but more overly with Julian all the way from New Zealand and Station Road. Now, Julian is a great guy. Many of you I know already support his channel and follow him. And if you don't, you should do. He really does know what he's doing and he is a great uh, content creator when it comes to model rails and I sort of have been working with Julian since way before Christmas and uh, we've been developing and designing along with Paul's input as well to create a new layout for a very odd shaped room. Now I've already shown you that room uh, in a previous video a few months ago. Well we're getting to the point now where I can almost start building the layout certainly all the tables and the timber work and I'm itching if you saw the state out there you would say there's no chance of me starting to build anything before this side of Christmas um, but I have got to make an effort to start at some point so I hope that it's not going to be another four months before I put more content out I do really hope that over the next few weeks I can actually start putting together um, some timber that I can start building the layout for real. Now, the big thing is that is without going into too much detail, it's based on a figure of eight. It's got uh, up and down as opposed to roundy roundy. <laughs> is that the right term? I don't know, whatever. Roundy roundy, but it's also got end to end as well in it. So it's quite complex, quite comprehensive. And with uh, Julian's help, we developed it and he's done because he's very, very good with, well, with Rail Modeler Pro. I have that program, but I'm useless at using it. Um, but he has been really, really um, a pillar of strength when it comes to developing it. So we're going to probably collab on a few uh, videos together where we put together all that we've been talking about, all that we plan on doing. Not sure how we're going to do that yet, but we plan on that. And then hopefully I can start bringing more regular content to you, uh, maybe once a month, uh, where I give you the progress of the new build. And I suppose Sandling Junction too? I don't know. Whatever, it still may just be Sandling Junction. But uh, it has only scant regard to the former Sandling Junction. Anyway, enough said. Let's get on with this video. I do hope you enjoy the uh, second of the weathering on that commission that I did before Christmas for the gentleman. He is very happy with it. I was really pleased with the outcome. I have unfortunately turned away quite a few commissions uh, for more weathering only because I have been very busy. It is something that I would love to get into doing more and it's something that as time progresses I will develop the uh, idea that I will do some commercial weathering for other people. The other thing is I'm never quite sure how much to charge 
And the biggest thing of all is that, you know, it takes me a long time. I'm not quick. I don't do it as a quick spray and a finish and that's done. I really take my time over it. I do as much research as I can and I, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I'm the same with my painting. If it's not right, I keep going until it is. And therefore, what should take some people a couple of hours or even less to do a weathering job on a wagon or something can take me almost a day. So I don't make much money out of it if I do make any at all. So that a couple of things there that I need to straighten out. And if I can get those sorted out in my head moving forward, then I may well, or you may well see me taking on more and more commissions for weathering projects, locos, diesels, and rolling stock. So yeah, watch out for that. I never know. <laughs> I might get a bit quicker. In the meantime, enjoy this video. Catch each and every one of you in the next one. Take care. Happy modeling wherever you are. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Okay, so now I'm back onto the tanker and I've got to put some oil spillage down through here, of course. But what I want to do first is get all the um, weathering on before I carry on with that. So I'm just going to come in here with some Humbrol powders. And I'm just going to work away on this little tanker before we start thinking about adding any more into it. What I'm aiming for is a subtle, sort of rusty glow in places, but then areas where there's very little rust, or there would be, but it's actually covered over with the oil spillage and stain. It's on the bottom of the stairs, looking a little bit rough and rusty, as it were, but just trying to get into these key areas to suggest little bits of rust spot. And there will be some of it quite well preserved, I would have thought, underneath all that oil and spillage from the tank itself. But out here, around the uh, leaf springs, they will be a lot more rustier, I'm sure. I'm just going to hold on to it a little bit.
client doesn't want this completely wrecked and rusted out as a unit so I'm mindful of that whilst I'm weathering this I'm afraid my indulgence is probably I would have made this almost ready for a scrap heap I love seeing the dirt on these things I love seeing all the fatigue of uh, use and uh, probably a, to a point a little bit of neglect obviously not from a safety point of view but uh, overall cleansing it would have been almost pointless from a day-to-day -day routine mountings are going to be a little bit rusty and worse the wear and I've come in with some sort of lighter rust in places just to suggest that there is a progression of rust and the whole thing I think has to be subtle um, so often you see very stark contrasts in weathering and I think that that's a bit of a mistake I'm gonna to have to come back in here and play around with some of the brake shoes etc I'm just gonna work my way around I'm gonna come in with a larger brush on this part the thing with a short stubby bristle brush that I'm using here you do have to be careful of fine parts of plastic because the stubbiness and the stiffness of the bristle will just take them straight off the model just be mindful of that and if you're not sure then use a smaller softer bristle brush and you'll probably not have any problems whatsoever so I'm just giving this a general coating of weathering powder and uh, work it in make it more subtle in places and more obvious in others now fair to say I'm not a railway person in terms of all the knowledge of different aspects of the railway trains wagons and there are many people out there who know far more than I ever will do and it would be rude of me to suggest that I did because I don't um, I don't come from that background but what I do when I come to my weathering is I try and visualize the lo the logic of weather effects rusts parts that it may or may not do now I don't always get it right I'm sure but I think that overall I think the effect is a nice effect and I'm not unhappy with the work that I've done certainly not to my own models and I hope not to clients models now that's very very stark so what I'm going to do now is come in with some darks just to soften the effect on that and it will all dull back of course once you start to give this a coating of um, matte varnish through the airbrush or through an air can whichever then all these effects will be dulled down anyway you don't normally get to keep um, the brightness of a color it does tend to get a little more subtle what I want to do now is just add in a little bit of light weathering up through the end here just a subtle a little effect so it's not just one jump from one to another I don't want to make the statements too much like this it's just getting a little bit too heavy wipe that off and that's the nice thing about all this sort of stuff is that if you do something that you really are not happy with it doesn't take a lot to get rid of it and start afresh just a subtle glow Almost you could sense a reflection in the end of this tanker to all the mess that's down here on the base. Come back and look at that in a little while. Let's move on, move round. Continue the same idea.
try and alter what you do from one part to another. Don't try and make it all the same. Try and vary from one side to another. One is more interesting, of course, things do not rust or weather in the same degree, in the same manner. So be mindful of that. Now I wanted to take the wheels out of this unit, but it's such a sophisticated model that um, it has sprung axles, which, you know, when you look at the price of this one, this is about 75 or more pounds. So it's going to have to sort of live up to quite a bit for that money. And it certainly does. It uh, has got some fantastic detail on it. And I have been very, very mindful of that when I've come in to do this weathering. But I wanted to say I wanted to take the wheels out, but I really couldn't do that. Or at least if I could, I didn't know how to. So safely anyway, I didn't want to destroy anything. As much as I can weather and airbrush and do all these sorts of things, I'm very, very... Uh, come up very very short when it comes to repair any of this stuff so i'd rather not damage it in the first place than come back and have to think about how to attach parts or get things working again <laughs> As I've said before, this stuff will fade back. Once it's got moisture to it, it will seep into the dry pigments and then it will dry much uh, more uh, thinly than you've applied it. So just be mindful of that too. And put a little bit of dirt and grind through there. A little bit too orange with that too much. So I'm just gonna fade that back a little bit into there and across this platform. Try and look at the way things look naturally and it's always well worth um, checking everything out that you see rusty. I came across a um, an electric thing on the side of the road, you know, one of these, either GPO or whatever it was, and it was so rusted. It was quite an amazing thing, really. I, I couldn't stop. I could only stop when uh, the traffic stopped there at some lights, and that's how I've noticed it. And, uh, it was quite an amazing um, structure because it was... The door was hanging off it and open and uh, the contents were partly exposed. But um, yeah, it wasn't the green color that it uh, should have been. It was this whole raft of different colors of rust through age, different aspects of rust on this thing. I'm gonna come in with this finer brush again Get into some of this little bit of detail around the hitch or the hook, whatever you call that part. And these lovely um, chains, three link chains. Now I 
will give these buffer ends a little bit of a sort of dirty rusty color and then when you come to add that little grease spot at the end once you've sealed everything off then it will show up so much more and i should imagine looking at many photographs that the buffers on the outer or peripheral edges away from that sort of um, grease spot as it were get quite rusty quite orange so that's what i'm doing with that and just a little bit of weathering out through there let's come back in with that I'm so mindful of how easy it is to damage this right now i'm going to come up with just a little bit of a thing as i did before not a lot of weathering powder in my brush just enough to push it around the end of that tanker what i don't want are brush lines marks um, sort of telling you exactly where it all is I just want that to be as subtle as I can make it okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to come in underneath some of this finer detail off camera and uh, you get the idea of that I'm just going to do these two buffer ends as well but then I'm going to do the bottom section and then I'm going to give it a seal coat and then I'm going to come in with the oil grime stains over the body and hopefully get this one close to a finish. <laughs> 